For the uh, last time, live from the Rimini meeting with our talk, uh, the work to come. Uh, good evening uh, to you. After all the uh, sessions this week, uh, after the pandemic, uh, we still have to understand the relation between work and life. Uh, our title is a bit different. Uh, it is a question like this, uh, work or life, with a question mark. So, uh, when uh, uh, does work uh, make life worth living? And how is that consistent uh, with uh, uh, environmental protection? We all agree that it is necessary to reduce uh, CO2 emissions. Uh, uh, we follow the debate towards uh, uh, green uh, transition and digital transition. We've talked a lot about it this week, but they have a social costs. Are we ready to pay for them? For them, we'll discuss uh, about that with our guests. So we have with us Giancarlo Blangardo, president of ISTAT, the Italian National Institute for Statistics, Marco Annapel from Philip Morris Italia, uh, Roberto Giacchi, uh, CEO of Italia Online, welcome, uh, Professor Giorgio Vitadini, president of the Foundation for Subsidiarity, and uh, we are uh, waiting to connect uh, with uh, uh, Giancarlo Giorgetti, who is the Minister for Economic Development, who will soon be connected with us. A round of applause for him in advance. Talking about sustainability, let's start from a question. What does, accept, what does it mean to accept this great challenge for a steel manufacturing group? We're talking about investments for thousands of millions, radical change in order to be in line with the European goals, a reduction by 30% of CO2 emissions and by 2030 and zero emissions by 2050. We have interviewed the representative of the Arvedi group that is being reorganized uh, to pursue sustainability. Let's watch the video. Now, these objectives can be uh, achieved uh, if some conditions are met. These conditions are the following. Uh, uh, there must be energy from uh, renewable resources. There must be the necessary infrastructures for hydrogen production. And uh, there must be uh, support from the European Union and national governments to the significant investment plans. Uh, here we're talking about billion euros. Also, there must be uh, the right way to fight uh, against the increase in steel costs that will be caused by these new technologies. According to Mario Caldonazio, uh, uh, heading a leading uh, steel manufacturing uh, group, uh, we see that he's very realistic that started green reconversion some time ago. Today, other factors cannot be neglected, such as employment, unemployment, uh, international competition, and uh, uh, the uh, supply of uh, green uh, energy. The plan by the Arvedi Group started in uh, Trieste, where in 2020, they shut off the uh, uh, refinery with uh, an industrial reconversion without uh, uh, 
firing any people. The result uh, led to a neutral transformation. Green reconversion has been an ethical choice. Uh, this is what is stated by Caldonazzo. But after the launch of European plans on CO2 emissions, it has also become uh, an economic issue. There is a system whereby you need to pay in order to uh, issue uh, um, uh, CO2, uh, issue, uh, emit CO2 emissions, as in you have to buy CO2 emissions shares which are uh, increasing in price day by day. They have multiplied by 10 over three years, and they will continue to increase. Much still has to be done. And the company is reiterating its commitment to uh, a green reconversion, but it launches an appeal to Italian and international institutions. We will fight because not only uh, the Italian steel groups, uh, but also all European steel companies must be able to complete their decarbonization process uh, to promote a green reconversion through a, se through a series of uh, uh, aid and support by the government uh, and the European Union, which must be made available promptly so that we can continue to invest. In short, transformation and reconversion processes are very compli complicated. Mr. Annapel, you are leading Philip Morris Italia. This is a group that worldwide controls one third of the uh, uh, tobacco sector. If we understood properly, as in, have you really engaged in uh, uh, convincing people giving up smoking by 2030? We are a bit surprised by that. Uh, can you uh, uh, dwell upon that? Our company um, uh, is uh, now promoting uh, transformation, and this is written in a document uh, which is a statement of purpose, and this has been published by the Board of Directors. This was signed in 2006 by the Board of Philip Morris, and uh, it gets uh, inspiration from uh, investments uh, of $8 billion in R&D to create alternatives to the core products of the company, as in cigarettes, uh, which are not very sustainable as a product. So we have tried to create alternatives with new technologies that can uh, replace uh, these uh, products. That has led to great change, uh, which is now occurring in Italy. Uh, the first production plant uh, has been made uh, uh, near Bologna, 1 billion uh, uh, euros investments. It is not only the uh, largest greenfield investments in Italy over the past 20 years, but uh, 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 it is also a plant where we use machinery and equipment uh, which are produced in Italy. So this is a worldwide transformation for Philip Morris that started in Italy. In the Declaration of Purpose, the idea is to replace cigarettes by alternative products in a very short period of time. So it is a very serious statement of purpose. We have made many investments on that. Many billion euros have been invested that continue to generate investments in Italy. So not only do we have the uh, production plant here in Italy, but over the next month, in a few months, we will uh, open up uh, the academy, no, the uh, research center in Italy. Uh, we have with us uh, uh, Minister uh, Giorgetti, Minister for Economic Development. Can you say something? Unfortunately, we can't hear you. Yes, now we can hear you. Good evening. Welcome. 
I'll give you a short summary. We've watched a video on uh, steel reconversion from the uh, Arvedi group uh, uh, in Bologna and Trieste. Then uh, uh, Annapel uh, said uh, what Philip Morris is doing in the tobacco sector, uh, finding uh, uh, alternative products, to find alternative products. So sustainability is vital for our production system. However, there is a still social sustainability, as you recently mentioned in some interviews in the newspapers. Will that have repercussions from a social point of view? Well, I'm a bit afraid of that. I think that we are already witnessing some uh, uh, situations uh, of what uh, uh, could happen in the future. However, what will happen uh, will not happen overnight. We have uh, uh, enacted some rules. And we have set a, 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 um, a timeline. So the public sectors has identified a timeline whereby transition uh, should be managed. So if we decide that, for example, diesel um, uh, will no longer be produced because it will be impossible to sell uh, uh, diesel fuel cars in 10 years, it means that we have 10 years time to get ready. Otherwise, uh, those who are now currently working in the uh, production chain of uh, diesel engines will be unemployed in 10 years time. So the company will need to reconvert, those people will need to change their job. It is um, a very difficult choice, a challenging one, but there's an advantage to that. We know that in advance, and therefore we have some time available. This is not by chance that significant resources allocated by the National Recovery Plan are there to be used for that, for that purpose. And this transitionary phase must not create differences. If Italy and Europe decides to go for that, all the competitors around the world will have to do the same. So that uh, unfair, uh, so that there is no unfair competition. Otherwise, uh, some uh, companies will be penalized. Mr. Giacchi. Italia Online is the most important entering company uh, in Italy. Uh, there was a boom of smart working during the pandemic. This has uh, accelerated digitalization. And this is inevitable. Does that only have a positive impact on production and employment? To answer, I will give you my interpretation of what has happened during the pandemic. Let's talk about companies, for example. Let's not talk about major companies, but only companies with less than 250 employees. Overall, investments in the digital world have uh, increased over 2020 and early 2021. Then, if we break that down, the growth of investments in the digital world has partly been led by those companies up to three employees. So the companies with three to 250 employees have overall reduced their investments due to economic problems. Those who have invested the most are the very small companies up to three employees. What can we infer from that? that at the times of crisis like this, uh, the digital world uh, is a tool for self-employment, whereby uh, people can uh, independently create their own business. And this has a lot of positive impacts in terms of flexibility, 
opportunities. It creates the uh, 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 opportunity to do what uh, companies want to do. But uh, there's also the other side of the coin, as in, this is flexible business, but strongly connected to performance and results. So, for the companies that have invested uh, uh, in the digital uh, sector, um, uh, income highly depends on their performance. Uh, this has a social and economic repercussions. The digital world is providing uh, unprecedented opportunities, but at the same time, it is creating risks. And it is important to take action and to uh, anticipate these risks. Now, uh, let's now uh, watch a video. We have interviewed Larry Pejin, who is the uh, uh, chairman of the Spanish Network for Sustainable Development. Yeah. We saw as many world leaders uh, have understood well that we're not going to exit this crisis if we do not do this all together. This means it is not enough to um, immunize all the population, but we need to do it uh, with uh, all the citizens of the planet, not only those of uh, industrialized countries. They've understood that it is useless to commit oneself if you exclude those who have lost their jobs uh, during this crisis. And uh, recovery um, needs to bear in mind a green and inclusive kind of economy. We are aware of the fact that the environment is not an isolated pillar. It is at the core of our social and economic model. For this, we are um, pointing at a, um, at a greener kind of uh, development. Uh, some countries, such as Italy, Portugal, and Spain, southern European countries, have an enormous opportunity to uh, focus on alternative energies and renewable energies in order to uh, provide uh, further uh, energy autonomy to the country and to the continent and moving towards uh, an ecological and uh, greener transition including all those living in rural areas, more isolated areas, um, who have less opportunities today. President Blangiardo, she talks about uh, um, uh, green transition and fair uh, employment. You have um, devised the uh, best, the uh, equitable and sustainable well-being. That's a new indicator. It's a new indicator. Uh, which um, has turned 10 uh, this year, we exploited the logics uh, of, the, um, of not considering only wage and income. The well-being and the quality of life of people also depends on a set of situations marking their uh, life context. There are 11 different dimensions. So the BES is a, a set of indicators, 150, divided into 11 different dimensions, health, education, environment, etc. Grouped together, they manage us to grasp the differential aspect which mark the territory from this point of view. Uh, the final uh, aim is that of uh, uh, taking stock of the situation, grasping the differential aspect uh, uh, in the territory in Italy. In a few days, we're going to have the territorial version uh, with data referring to the different provinces. And this enables us to grasp not only the uh, differential data, but also um, to um, focus on the uh, advance to the progress or to the um, steps back. Uh, and we can make an evaluation without um, bias, and you can grasp whether a certain situation has uh, improved or worsened. And this is very important in order to uh, understand whether we're moving into the right direction. In addition to being a president of the um, Foundation for Subsidiarity, uh, Mr. Vitadini is also a professor at the U uh, Bicocca University of Milan. How would you judge? How do you judge this kind of uh, uh, new indicator? Well, I think that if we have only the GDP and no um, BES in a country in where there is a, an oligarch or a sheikh having everything, and all the other uh, the rest of the population is very poor. 
we do not take uh, we do not realize whether a country is growing well or not in one um, this is not the case in one country there may be a very rich person and all the others are hungry um, in another country this is not the case Italy is one of the best countries in this respect if we have a look at this kind of indicators we start to see that Italy has many things which work well um, and not only things which uh, do not work properly. In this case, in Italy, we have a, um, a lack um, in terms of education. You would not see only focusing on the GDP. And Minister Giorgetti, what do you think about this BES, about this new indicator, um, especially bearing in mind that we are in a period of profound transformation? Uh, well, first of all, I believe that this is a very um, useful initiative. When I was the president of the um, budget committee of the parliament, uh, uh, we started, uh, we tried to find new ways of evaluating uh, the well being of the population uh, as an alternative to the GDP only. Um, at that time, many formulas were uh, devised. Um, talking about the, the capital as a factor and the work as a factor. Well, these instruments need to be updated in the national um, accounting. Uh, we, um, if you think about the uh, the work of the public administration, uh, this is not um, related to the creation of wealth in many instances. So we need to uh, go towards new uh, forms of accounting, uh, of calculation of the well-being of the wealth of a, of a country. And we should also make efforts to find new forms of uh, um, economy and politics, uh, which are different from the um, previous uh, forms of uh, economic policies in which the scenario was completely different from uh, from the one of today. You've mentioned Alitalia. Alitalia is, uh, is a very painful case um, to us um, as Italians. Uh, Alitalia for many years, uh, or at this uh, the beginning, uh, meant that the, um, that the plan was uh, successful. Alitalia was a reference model um, also, in uh, in terms of service of the uh, air transportation, then uh, started a, a different period uh, full of uh, losses um, up to the uh, economic collapse, which led to um, an, an unscheduled administration procedure, and then the passage to the uh, new company called ETA. The choice was a painful choice. A painful decision because the new company um, should not continue to uh, to spend um, uh, the money of taxpayers but currently the company is consuming about 30 million euros per month and they are paid by the taxpayers evidently this is not a sustainable situation our hope is, is that ETA starting from the current situation uh, with um, a downsizing in economic terms may um, may intercept the recovery of the um, air transport market, uh, especially as soon as the freedom to, uh, to move is uh, fully restored, maybe not alone. I always say that it is uh, the case to find um, forms of collaboration with other um, uh, with other um, airlines uh, or maybe with the railway uh, system, bearing in mind that probably in the future uh, aircrafts will not continue, will not have to uh, continue uh, being as pollutant as they are today. In this respect, the search for uh, aircrafts uh, uh, that are more environmentally sustainable uh, will probably foster the uh, activity of a company which is starting from scratch and it can reinterpret itself in a greener uh, key. Um, as for the social uh, price, I think that today the trade unions had the uh, first meeting with the um, administrators of the managers of the new company. Certainly this is a process which uh, has to be uh, managed uh, um, 
very carefully because it's going to have a very significant uh, social impact. Of course, we wish uh, the best uh, for this company. Now, two small stories of um, entrepreneurial creativity. Uh, one comes from Macerata, and it involves uh, three young entrep uh, women entrepreneurs, and uh, another one is a Portuguese uh, cheese producer. My name is Anna Faccioni. Uh, I work uh, for the um, Monterosi Paccioni uh, farm. I work in the administration of our supply chain. My name is Katia Monterotti. I uh, am in charge of the um, salami production, in particular, our uh, product, which is a best selling product, which is called Ciauscolo, which is a typical uh, salami of the um, high Macerata area. The agricultural um, supply chain Monterotti Paccioni stems from the um, union of three um, young girls. The Monterotti family uh, dealt with the production of the salami and the uh, family Paccioni uh, dealing with the um, uh, with, um, with pig uh, uh, raising. We had met several years ago. Uh, we knew each other. There was a sort of collaboration between the two uh, families. We decided to uh, unite our efforts because we had two strengths which uh, could, uh, which put together could uh, do uh, something more. Our union is a uh, strength for the final customers. Everything starts from the land we own. We um, grow all the cereals that will be then processed to become food for, um, for the pigs uh, up to the final product for the final customers. The filiera the supply chain was born in 2020. In, it's a very particular period for everybody, but we did not surrender. On the contrary, we decided exactly in the most difficult periods to uh, open a new um, a new shop in Paso Sant'Angelo in the province of Macerata. We've tried to provide a service, a complete service, um, bearing in mind um, home delivery in the worst period we could experience. When I was a kid, my dream was that of um, following uh, the path of my parents, and here I am. My dream as a kid was that of having a, a company, a farm, which could be all mine. And this, in this case, my dream came true. I am part of this project and it's part of me. Up to now, all we did was full of rewards and full of satisfaction. Hopefully, in the future, we will receive many more um, satisfaction, many more um, moments of satisfaction. And now, another small but big um, story from Portugal. My name is Maria, and I have a company uh, produce, uh, producing cheese. We uh, tr draw inspiration from foreign countries, uh, um, Chevre, uh, blue cheese. We uh, do all the. We make all the cheeses uh, in an artisan way. When the pandemics started in Portugal, many uh, decided to shut from one day to another, and most of our sales stopped. But the company uh, did not shut down. We continued to manage it, uh, although with uncertainty. The customers of the. Um, of the big supermarkets discovered our products. He liked it and he decided to buy it. So the supermarkets supported the company until the end of the year, uh, carrying out a policy of aid towards the small producers, uh, uh, keeping a good price for us and um, ordering uh, interesting amounts. So we managed to compensate the losses. And something else happened in another context. Um, a market of small producers was born. They uh, sell their um, craft products, and we've tried to uh, carry out 
a sort of a revolution in this respect. It was a, a very good opportunity to us, and these two uh, events managed to save our company. We increased our sales, and we had to hire more people. We are starting to, um, to get a more structured company now, and our activity is growing. Uh, without these two events, our growth would probably have been slower. So the pandemics, in the end, um, helped us, our company, grow. Last night, uh, uh, we saw a, a tomato producer with an hydroponic system and uh, um, a digital farming. In your opinion, would it really be uh, helpful for uh, these companies to become more digitized? Well, I think that uh, uh, the digital sector has both a negative and positive uh, impact. The uh, negative effect uh, is that uh, it can be divisive, as in uh, you must uh, have knowledge and skills to use uh, uh, the digital tools, otherwise you are excluded. But if you overcome this problem, then uh, the digital tool can really accelerate inclusivity, as in uh, you are more competitive, uh, uh, it reduces advantages. Um, so this means that the very small companies uh, uh, using uh, digital tools uh, can have access to opportunities uh, which could not find otherwise, but it is also inclusive in terms of uh, gender. For example, our business uh, uh, is also connected to training. We train uh, people to those who want to do business online on how to develop online presence, how to manage a website, uh, how to do e-commerce, uh, how to manage uh, an advertising campaign online, uh, how to manage social media, and how to manage e-commerce for these type of companies. In 2019, 23% of uh, participants in these uh, uh, trainings uh, uh, were women. In 2021, first seven months of 2021, the percentage increased to 40%. Hence, we have seen an acceleration of uh, uh, gender inclusion, therefore the involvement of women, for whom uh, the digital tools can be very, very important. Here we don't have uh, uh, women guests, but just today. We like a bit behind for that, but just today. So let's continue with Mr. Hannapel. Talking about women entrepreneurs, uh, Together with Ferrari, you are the only Italian private company that has been uh, certified for uh, uh, bridging the gender gap. How has that been possible? Yes, uh, we were certified by PricewaterhouseCoopers. Uh, which assessed uh, people based on performance, role, uh, and their professional career, and also assessed the uh, uh, salaries uh, uh, of people within the company, and uh, it uh, uh, reports gaps. Uh, certification lasts one year and provides uh, uh, very useful information in order to start managing the gender gap. Uh, if there's a salary gap, then it must be bridged. So the gap must be uh, analyzed, must be bridged, and then uh, this must be accompanied by uh, state and uh, corporate welfare policies. They are of the utmost importance in order to uh, 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 develop uh, uh, both men's and women's career. So a uh, gender uh, must uh, uh, not penalize people, certainly not. Uh, it must be a factor like uh, many others. Uh, men and women must have the same opportunities in terms of growth and development. All 
also today industry 4.0 enables women in our case more than one third of uh, our workforce is consists of women uh, so, and they can uh, grow uh, significantly um, in services and production. Today, statistics say the opposite. And COVID has uh, worsened the uh, gender gap and women's employment. Yes, the statistics uh, show that there is a gap on average. If we compare today's statistics with past statistics, uh, some steps forward have been made. So there is hope for the future. Then uh, COVID has certainly hit some sectors where there are uh, uh, more women. And therefore, this has worsened the situation. However, knowing the disease uh, helps us to identify treatment the therapy. Now, uh, I'll speak as a demographer. We have a problem in Italy. Last year, 404,000 um, 404, um, children were born, and this is dramatic. And this is the result of uh, different factors influencing uh, women's position in the world. You, uh, you must have a balance between uh, um, li uh, personal life and work life uh, for women. Otherwise, it's a problem. So you need to understand the problem, uh, understand its size, uh, make improvements, uh, and monitor improvements. So this is what we are doing, and uh, is that is uh, fully available to cooperate with anyone. So now, uh, let's see the survey that was made by the Foundation for Subsidiarity. Uh, we spoke about it uh, uh, many times, but uh, uh, today we have with us the uh, president of the uh, Foundation for Subsidiarity. So what are the questions asked by uh, this uh, survey? After the collapse between March and April 2020, uh, job posts on the web have increased, and over the past quarter, they have exceeded the levels of 2019. And this trend was confirmed this year. Over the first six months, more than 560,000 job posts were published on the web with a paradox. In one third of the cases, companies find it hard to find a qualified workforce. 74 percent of the positions are in the north, 15 percent in the center, and only 11 percent in the south and islands. From where most uh, uh, job demands come. The survey made by the Foundation for Subsidiarity in collaboration with the research, of, research center of the University Bicocca in Milan has shown that over the past five years, the demand for skills has enriched by 30%. The jobs that have mostly changed are those connected to new technologies, uh, robotics and artificial intelligence, for example. But even old jobs require a continuous upskilling and the improvement of uh, skills from the restoration world to the communication sector and trade in general. Over over the next five years, over the past five years, there has been a change that has been unprecedented. Work is something complex, transforming uh, uh, swiftly, fast. So we need uh, people who can uh, uh, tackle change uh, and have uh, um, and are ready for change and are able to work uh, in team. These skills become uh, more and more important for the person and for companies. Companies do not all, are not only looking for technical skills but also digital skills. They have increased by 22 percent. Employers want people who can innovate, uh, work in team, and solve problems. Uh, we are an innovation hub. Uh, since uh, 2016, uh, we have invested uh, on uh, projects uh, for talented people. So we uh, promote uh, projects uh, with new ideas and innovations. Working on sustainable development, we have uh, 
identified a framework to identify practical actions and practical topics uh, that must be tackled by the main by the main stakeholders, as in people, companies, and institutions. EOLO uh, is uh, a telecommunications uh, operator uh, providing connectivity in all uh, mountain and rural areas uh, where others are not present. We've been operating in that uh, for 15 years and we have uh, uh, a customer base of about 600,000 customers. In order to tackle the challenge of change, we need to strengthen educational and training systems for companies, services, and institutions. In terms of training and lifelong learning training, Italy is below European standards. Every year, only seven out of 100 Italian people uh, attend training courses. So what are the consequences for employment policies? Employment policies in, against this background must increasingly find new ways to uh, transfer skills and adapt the skills in those sectors that can best uh, take on the opportunities created by the new context of sustainable development. So. Professor Vitadine, why have you been focusing on the world of employment? You have also spoken about that in your magazine. Because if you don't work, you don't eat. If you don't work, you don't uh, develop. You don't. You cannot grow. If you don't work, you cannot be a man or a woman. Because uh, we, we cannot speak about happy degrowth. If we don't work, uh, there will no longer be intensive care units motorways, digitalization, and this is crucial. Let me also say uh, and uh, make reference to what Mina uses to sing personality. We need to invest on that. And also education. We need to invest on work and training by uh, looking for people, personal and educate them. Otherwise, we will lag behind. Minister, I think you agree on that. And you agree with Vitadini. Yes, Vitadini and I always speak beforehand, before any session. We speak about things, and he carries out surveys and publishes reports. I think that work is really vital. Not because this is written in our Constitution in Article 1, but because work uh, expresses people's personality. We need a common effort uh, and uh, on education, on uh, uh, training, schools and universities. But also we need to focus on lifelong learning. The world will continue to change more rapidly, and that requires cognitive skills and also the uh, ability to change, the ability to react, and the ability to imagine something new, new ideas. Right now, uh, we need many workers, entrepreneurs, as in uh, many workers uh, who uh, have uh, ownership and can change their jobs. And we also need to take on the challenges ahead. You watched some videos and you talked about digital opportunities. Let's think about e-commerce, for example. At the beginning, e-commerce uh, will have devastating effects on uh, retail shops, for example, even in terms of jobs and employment. But there's also the other side of the coin. Around the world, uh, you can see that the main need in Italy is pretty much appreciated throughout the world. And sometimes it is hard to find it. 
Today, the e-commerce enables all entrepreneurs, even the smallest ones, to sell everywhere, to reach every corner of the world, every corner of the globe. Italian products are searched for, are appreciated because they are nice, because they are beautiful, because they give something different. And e-commerce enables many people to reach markets which would have been unthinkable some years ago. But in addition to digital technologies, that requires entrepreneurial spirit, as in the willingness to take on risks. Hence. Uh, economy and development are not promoted by our uh, ministry. We are only there to uh, ensure governance. Uh, we can help in this context. Uh, but uh, uh, let's say if uh, uh, the, uh, the ministry, our ministry intervenes at the time of crisis and when we need to lead others. We need to lead the transition processes, which uh, in some cases can also lead to crises, but also open up opportunities in other sectors. Do you need to add something? No, I'm done. Uh, two short answers. You uh, represent uh, companies at the forefront of transformation. Based on these surveys, uh, what are you doing in order to uh, uh, train people on uh, uh, soft skills? We are investing in a training center. It will be opened in a few months' time. It's been devoted to developing. It is a, a, an industrial skills center which is not only a training uh, center for our employees, but it creates the future employees. So training seen in three different moments within the company, when hiring, so the initial training of the employee, and when the worker uh, keeps working in order to, uh, to keep uh, training as a constant uh, factor. And then we have an internal circuit. Uh, we want to focus on the on what comes before hiring. Uh, along with the Emilia-Romagna Regional Authority, we created an open system which in advance communicates and, and manages uh, along with the uh, big um, training centers such as the Bologna University, Alma Mater, the uh, Polytechnic University of Bari, and probably more uh, polytechnic universities will also join, and the scientific and technical uh, high schools that were a little bit forgotten in the past. So um, uh, training the skills which are needed in the company, uh, a company constantly lives uh, um, on a deficit of skills. Our countries, when it comes to some categories of skills, uh, produces uh, less, more, less resources than the resources that are needed. Those, for, in, for instance, the world of uh, um, developers, uh, data scientists, uh, those who um, are um, experts in coding, uh, there is a um, demand on the market for these kind of skills, which is higher than the availability of, of human resources. And so we have a high turnover of these resources. Of course, uh, they tend to exploit the opportunities that are offered to them. So it is not just a, just a competitive factor related to the company. It is a fact, competitive factor for the whole country. If we do not develop these skills, we miss opportunities to create added value and to create productivity. Professor Vitadini, as for the skills, well, this was a core uh, factor in your report. The challenge relates uh, and refers to the whole country. Of course, we may devise a slogan, after the crisis, a new beginning. This is the the topic of the uh, changing confidence in skills. Uh, to uh, make reference to soccer, we were um, out of the World Cup before the year 2019. We need to 
uh, win the European Championships. Is, this is why we need a lot of uh, coaches like uh, Mancini. Uh, Mr. Giorgetti, uh, are you like Mancini? Um, well, the, as in sports, what really matters are the results, the final results. So when we we will uh, analyze the, the way we um, the decisions we made while we were in government, uh, the citizens will judge by the results obtained. At the end of our experience in the government, a couple of weeks ago, I had dinner with the. Um, German Ministry of Economy, and the minister told me uh, this year we are um, faring very well. I think we were going to have an increase in the GDP uh, of 4%, and for the first time in the recent history, uh, I was so satisfied to tell him uh, we're going to have a probably 6 percent increase in the GDP. This is not my merit, it is not um, Mr. Draghi's merit, but it is a fact. So with this um, important uh, um, metaphor based on soccer, uh, we've come to the conclusion of this uh, last talk of the Rimini meeting 2021. I would like to thank all the guests of Mr. Um, Giancarlo Giorgetti, the Minister uh, for Economic Development. Thank you very much, and I wish you a fruitful work. Uh, Mr. Blangiardo, uh, the President of Istat, Marco Hanapel, President and CEO of Philip Morris Italia, uh, Roberto Giacchi, CEO of Italian Online, and Professor Giorgio Vitadini, the president of the Foundation for Subsidiarity. We remind you once again that the meeting, as we said every evening, needs your contribution and our contribution to continue existing. Part of the donations will be devoted to the Welcome House of Campala, where uh, Rose Businghe welcomes uh, uh, kids and, ch and young boys and girls coming from difficult situations. Uh, we are all a bit tired, and so we've uh, come to the end of these six days' uh, uh, talks. We would like to publicly thank all the all those who collaborated with us in the uh, studio and behind the scenes, uh, and especially to the director, Mr. Collani, all the colleagues uh, who uh, worked uh, for 26 uh, um, journalist uh, report, uh, reports and the coordinator. Uh, uh, see you uh, during the next uh, edition of the Rimini meeting. See you at the next Rimini meeting. Thank you.